All right there, boys and girls. Get excited for flipping a little bit more flip class with vascular plants. These ones do not have seeds. So vascular plants, you're going to see a lot of commonalities with our other non-vascular plants. In fact, here's the group of our non-vascular plants called bryophytes. You'll notice here we've got our liverworts, our hornworts, and our mosses. And off of the moss, remember we talked about them having those uh, primitive conductive tissues and the sporophyte getting a little bit larger than the gametophyte. Well, this group of the very primitive uh, vascular plants, they branched off from there and you can actually see a lot of similarities between them. So let's look at them. All right, the main difference, though, is what we're going to start with, vascular tissue. Vascular plants are called vascular plants because they have special conductive tissue to move water and nutrients throughout the plant. Therefore, they can grow way, way, way more huge, horrific, and complexifier. There's two main types of vascular tissue that you need to know about. There is the xylem. This is very stiff conductive tissue. It's strengthened with this protein called lignin. It's very, very strong. So we're talking about a very stiff plant being lignified. There's primary xylem, which is kind of soft. Secondary xylem is actually wood. The chairs that you're sitting in in class are made out of secondary xylem. That's the woody part of the tree. Xylem conducts water from roots to shoots, that is, from down here to up through here. That's the xylem. All right, now it's carrying that water, but it's also going to be carrying any nutrients or anything else dissolved in the soil, like those nitrates and the phosphates and anything else. Again, this is fed up here by the top with that straw capillary action through transpiration that we talked about earlier this year. So next is the phloem. If you're looking at this as a cross section of a stem, you'll actually see xylem on the inside. They just look like dead material. And then the phloem will be farther towards the outside. Here you've got some wood. This is your xylem again. And then the, this area here is where you'll find your phloem. This is the part where if you like strip the bark off of, of a plant, you could actually damage the phloem. These are very soft. Again, they're on the outside, and the purpose here is to transport sap. And that's water, but primarily with sugar in it. So we think of the phloem as moving sugar through the plant. And this actually moves from the leaves down to the rest of the plant. So we call that shoots to roots. It's fed by gravity. Remember, the leaves are up here doing photosynthesis. So the photosynthesis generates those sugars, sends it down to the rest of the plant, like the roots, who may need those. This is our bridge, this is our transition species between our non-vascular plants and what we consider the modern plants, like plants like what you think of outside. They're more basal, which means they're not quite as modified by evolution. Some of the things they have in common with non-vascular plants is they reproduce, again, primarily with spores. And just like with the non-vascular plants, they have the swimming sperm as well. There are four major phyla that you need to know about. There are lycophyta, look at that, the wolf plants. There are arthrophyta, the wrist or joint plants. There's pterophyta, the toe plants. Then there's solithophyta, which we will not look at in lab because they're actually, I don't even think they're native to Ohio. They're native to Michigan, so I studied them at college, but meh. So lycophytes, these are the most basal group. Their common name are the club mosses. They grow very, very low to the ground. They're more similar to regular moss. However, they have found some ancient species that were up to 35 meters tall, so I don't even know what's up to that. They send out this really nice lateral growth and really colonize areas. Here's some pictures of club moss. There they are looking all club mossy. Here is the club moss sporophyte sticking up there. You'll notice we've got a photosynthetic sporophyte this time. It gets way larger than regular moss because why? You guessed it, vascular tissue. Check these out. Oh, look at them being all purtyful and club mossy, sitting in some red mulch for contrast. Let's talk about the joint plants. There's two main groups. There's the scouring rush, which you can find all over Knox County, pictured here on the side. And there are also horsetails, which are sort of a subgroup, equicetophyte, equi-like, equine-like horse plants. 
Most of them, however, don't look anything like horsetails. They're very, very sturdy in the stock. They've got a whole bunch of lignin, but they also have silica crystals in there. Silica is SiO2. This is what quartz, this is what sandpaper, this is what glass is made out of. So these things are super, super hard. You've probably seen, like, silica gel hanging out like, oh, don't eat this stuff. It's there just to keep your shoes from getting damp. That's silica. That's the stuff that's on the outside of the horsetails and the scouring rush, and we get to feel it, and you get to see it with a microscope. It's gritty. It's called scouring rush because people used to use them to scour pots with. Here's a picture of them. They have this really nice sporangia up at the top. These are where the spores get all made. So the spores get made here, and just like before, they're going to be uh, sent out. They're going to be dispersed with the wind. <clears throat> so here you can see some nice joints. That's why their phylum has the name Joint to Fight the Joint Plants. Terrafida. Apparently somebody thought these things looked like toes. These are ferns. You see these everywhere. They're the most successful not seedless vascular plant. They grow out of this really cool structure called a fiddlehead, which is right here. It's this curled up mare stem up at the top, and they sort of unfurl from that as they grow larger, which is really cool. They have these sori, with these little groups of four uh, devices to produce and hold all the spores, and they're actually underneath the leaves. If we get some fertile uh, fern fronds, we should be able to see some sori hanging out on the bottom. Also, here's some fiddleheads. I hear tell that they are delicious when you eat them like this. Yum. Here's a picture showing you the sori. You see here's their little clumps, and each one of these is going to be like, like just full of spores. They'll burst, wind disperse, microscopic like before. They actually look kind of like a, a coating. Now the final group, the xylophytes, these are the whisk ferns. Now you'd think that these are the most basal. These are actually the most distal in the group. These are the most evolved. These are the most modified. You see they're called stick plants sometimes. You'll see these nodes and nodules. This is where they're going to make all their beautiful spores. But all this green part are actually highly reduced leaves, which means they have true vascular tissue in them and they can perform photosynthesis. So the whisk ferns are really cool. Now it wouldn't be va vascular plants if we weren't looking at their life cycle. So here's their life cycle. Again, you need to make sure that you get this down on your paper, children. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, then you should pause it and draw it, or maybe draw it along with me. The mature sporophyte, here it is. That's our main generation, so we'll start there. The sporophyte being all spory. In the story, this is for the ferns, but they all follow the same general pattern. They perform meiosis again, which is changing our 2N, our, hap, our diploid, it's changing our 2N diploid sporophyte is making haploid spores. So this right here, this is the beginning of the gametophyte generation over here in blue. So these spores, they're haploid. They are doing their thing just like in non-vascular plants. They're wind dispersed, they fly around. Remember, these are a lot taller so the wind can carry them a lot further. So the seedless vascular plants colonize much better than the mosses and their allies. Almost all ferns have hermaphroditic gametophytes. They're heart-shaped. These dangly doodles down here are the boy parts and the little lumps up here are the girl parts. So you can see you've got the archegonium up here, arch, that's for the egg parts, antheridium, these are the mam parts down here. They do mitosis again. Mitosis. Oh man, I'm so good at drawing on a mouse. They do mitosis to make the gametes. And then when they come together, fertilization, this is the first time that we're now up to zygote, we're now up to 2N. Remember, we've got this haploid organism, it's N. It does mitosis to make haploid still gametes. The gametes fuse together to make our diploid offspring. And just like in the non-vascular plants, you can see here, we've got our new diploid sporophyte growing out of the old gametophyte. 
like I said before, these antheridium are making swimming sperm, so they need to be in a very moist, wet environment. This is one of the reasons why you see them coming up before everything else when the ground is still sort of flooded and almost half frozen because the sperm is swimming. The spores here are much more sturdy than in our non-vascular plants, but they're still, they're pretty basal as far as plants are concerned. So make sure you take some time, get this down, don't forget all the ends and two ends and such. Thanks for watching everybody, and don't forget to moodle. Link in the doodle.